All right, I'm going to do a quick uh, mini video here on lemniscates, and that's in polar graphing uh, topic here. And uh, lemniscates, you can typically recognize they are lemniscates if you have r squared equals uh, 9 times a sine or a cosine of 2 theta. Okay, and uh, what I want to do to show you how to do this is uh, I am going to graph uh, this is r equals the square root of, it will be plus or minus here, um, the sine of 2 theta. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph uh, um, 3 sine 2 theta. Because if I can graph this, then I know I can get this, an approximation for this. All right, so let's do that. Let, uh, 3 sine 2 theta, the period here is 2 pi over the period factor of b, which is 2. So 2 pi over 2 is uh, pi. And then the increment is uh, pi over 4, because it's 1 fourth the period. Okay, so we're going to go uh, pi and then half and then half, half. And then this is pi over 4, this is pi over 2. Um, this is, now try again. Pi, yeah, that was right. I don't know what, what I was thinking. Anyway, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, and then we're going to go all the way to 2 pi just to see what happens. And this is going to be uh, 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4, and 8 pi over 4, which is uh, 2 pi. All right, my amplitude is 3, so I'm going to go from th negative 3 to 3. I'm going to oscillate between those two points. This is a sine curve whose midline is uh, 0, y equals 0, so let's plot some points. And we've got a positive amplitude, so we're going to go up, back to the midline, down, back to the midline, up, back to the midline, down, amplitude, back to the midline. And we're going to plot some points here. Okay, now this is the curve r equals 3 sine 2 theta. Now what happens when I put a square root over here? We need to have a discussion about that. What happens when we put a square root over here? Here I'm going to put my square root on. Well, first thing I know is that I cannot take the square root of any negative numbers. So then I know that this curve here is not really here. It's going to be the dash. It's not, it's not going to exist. Okay, so I know that I can't consider this part of the curve because I can't take the square root in the real universe, uh, real number universe, to, to take the square root of that, those negative numbers. So uh, I know for a fact that these are not part of my curve. I do know, however, that I'm taking the square root of these positive r values. Now let's talk about taking the square root of numbers, and I maybe misspoke on the previous video on this, but let's say I'm taking the square root of a number between 0 and 1, because that's what I'm doing here, in effect, without the 3. I'm taking, because sine's domain is all real numbers, and its range is negative 1 to 1, but I'm, my range here is 0 to 1. Okay, so let's take the square root of um, a number between 0 and 1, like 1 half. That's 0. 0.5. The square root of uh, 1 half is 0. 0.707. Is that bigger than 1 half? Well, it is. So the square root curve is going to be, except for when I plug in pi over 4. When I plug in pi over 4, I get the sine of 2 pi over 4, or the sine of pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. 1 times 3 is 3. Except for this point right here, I'm going to share, the square root curve is going to share this, this point and this point, and it's going to share the zeros because the sine of 0 is still 0 no matter what. And then if I put... Uh, 
2 pi over 4 in here, I get the sine of 2 pi, uh, uh, I'm sorry, 2 pi over 4, and I get the sine of 2 pi over 4 times 2, which is 4 pi over 4, which is the sine of pi, which is still 0. So these points are the same. And we just found out that if I'm taking the square root of the regular trig, trig function standard values, that the square root numbers are a little bit bigger. So this curve is going to bow out a little bit and be a little bit bigger, except for the maxes and the zeros. OK? And here, so it's going to, the, the square root curve is going to be a little bit like that. But I can approximate the graph using just the positive y values of the sine of 2 theta if I was just graphing it on the curve here, okay? And I took the liberty uh, before we started this, this video of graphing these on Desmos so that you could see that I have the three sine two theta, which we graphed together just a moment ago. And that's got the domain and range of all, you know, the domain is all real numbers. The range is negative one to one for the green curve. But then what happens when I take the square root of all of the sine values? Well, I can only take the square root of the positive sign values, so the negative ones aren't on the graph. So you notice the purple curve doesn't go below the x-axis. And when we take the square root of a number that's between 0 and 1, that's actually bigger than the number that you took the square root of. So the curve, the purple curve, all the y values on the purple curve, or the r values I should say, are a little bit bigger than the non-square rooted curve, okay? Now I have this in rectangular form here because I have it as y equals and not r equals, okay? All right, so let's go back to what we were doing, graphing. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my polar points. So I guess I'll stay in this color if, if, if we can see it. Or maybe I'll do a different color. Let's do a different color. I'm feeling. Oh, no, we'll just stay this color. All right. So I'm starting at the pole. There it is. Starting at the pole. And um, I'm going to go um, out radially three and then rotate pi over four. Now I'm going to put these in increments of one half. So this would be one, two, three. So I'm going to go out radially three and then rotate to pi over four. And there's my point. That's this point right here. And now I'm going to go back to the pole. So I'm going to go, and my R is getting bigger, and then I'm going to go back to the pole. Now, I, can, I have nothing here. It's like I'm pausing for a moment. Right? And then I start again here, and then I'm, get, I'm going to start at uh, the pole. And then I'm going to go out radially 3, and then rotate to pi pi over 4. Okay, so I'm passing uh, pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4. Make sure I'm on the same circle here. Pi to 5 pi over 4. Okay, so I'm going to go back and pass through. And hit this, and then I'm going to go back to the pole. Okay, even though there was a pause here, this is what's graphed. This is the curve that's graphed. Okay, so that is the lemniscate. And the angle here that is uh, bisecting that is theta equals pi over 4. And that's because that's where the max r value is, okay? All right, so what happens if I have a cosine curve? And here, well, let me show you the, uh, the uh, polar curves here. This would be if I had it regularly. What happens when I have it with the square root? So you, you notice that the negative parts go away. Those are actually the negative petals that that fall off the rows so to speak <laughs> right and then we're left whoops I didn't mean to scroll in like that sorry about that 
And then we're left with just these, these uh, petals. Of course, they're a little bit prettier than my drawing, but you know, mine's a rough sketch. All right, so let's go to the cosine. So if I'm graphing the cosine, you know, knowing that this is R and theta, shorten this a little bit so we have some space. Uh, the cosine now is going to be R equals plus or minus 4 cosine of 2 theta. So, I'm sorry, square root of 2 theta. So I'm going to graph it without the square root. 4 and negative 4. My midline is still 0, and we've got 2 pi, pi. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we'll just put pi over 2 here. I have the same period factor, right? So I'm going to have, uh, this is pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4. Okay, this is a cosine curve, so we're going to start up in amplitude to the midline and down into the midline and then up and back to the midline and then down and back to the midline and up. And if I were to graph the regular cosine without the square root, there it would be. And this is r equals um, 4 cosine 2 theta. Cosine, of course, lies between negative 1 and 1. So what happens when I take the square root? Well, this stays the same because if I plug 0 in here, I get cosine of 0. zero cosine of 0 is 1. Square root of 1 um, is uh, 1 times 4 is 4. So that point stays the same. This point stays the same. But what happens here is that this part of the curve is gone because I'm taking the square root of negative numbers here, which I can't do. They, they turn out to be imaginary. So I have a little bit of a gap here. And I share these points. And remember, I'm a little bit bigger here because the square root of a number between uh, 0 and 1 is a little bit bigger than the number you took the square root of. So this, of course, won't be here either. All right, so let's see what happens to the graph. So I'm going to start at 4 radially. So let's, I'll do blue here. So this is 1, 2, 3, Four. I'm going to do it with increments of a half here. So if I go out four radially and I rotate zero degrees, so I stay on the polar axis, then I have to go back to the pole before pi over four. So here we go, before pi over four, I'm going to the pole. So I'm to the pole. But i got to wait here for a minute until cosine is done with going passing through all its negative numbers, and then... I'm back at the pole again. So it's an effect, a bounce here. It's a bounce. And then I'm going to go out radially 4. And my next point on the graph is going to be at pi. So I go out radially 4 and then rotate pi. So this will be my second point here. 4 radially pi. Okay. Now what happens? I got to go back to the pole, right? Because this was only half, and then I go back to the pole here. So I'm now back to the pole. And then I sit there for a minute while cosine goes through all its uh, negative numbers, and I'm back at the pole again. And then I have my next and last point is going to go 4, and, and my angle is 2 pi, so I'm going to go all the way back around. So I'm going to go from the pole back to where I started again. So these two are an effective bounce at the pole. And then we go here and I wait for a minute and then I am uh, going to bounce again, right? So we go, the first, this first part here is this part of the sketch. This part from here to here is this part of the sketch, this entire loop here. And then I have a bounce at the pole, pole, and then I go back again. All right, so lemnus gates are really easy. And if you were going to look at the cosine curve, right, well, let's go to Desmos really quick because this is a shorter video. I'm going to go to Desmos, and I'm going to 
um, change this now to r equals uh, 4 cosine 2 theta. Oops. Let me get rid of this one. And then what we're going to do is copy this part. And then go r equals negative, I'm sorry, 4 square root. Control B paste. And so then what happened is you see that the R values are bigger on the red curve. But what ha what do you suppose these two loops are? Well, those are the negative loops that we're, we're omitting when we take a square root. Because then the negative R values created these two loops, if that makes any sense at all. Okay, which I think is pretty cool. All right. Now, some people have asked me the question, well, Mrs. Muller, what happens? Hold on a minute. To copy this the plus and the minus situation well let's put this this right here is the uh, plus situation now I'm going to put a minus here okay and I'm going to make this one dashed well you can't really see it that color let's make it orange can you see that this black curve is the exact same as the orange dashed curve I'm going to get rid of this one and so it doesn't matter whether you choose the plus or the minus, because the minus means that instead of starting over here and drawing your first part of your curve, you're going to start over here and draw this one first. That's the only difference. Okay, so it doesn't matter which one you choose to, to draw. Um, now what happens if I um, do square root in front of here? Square root. Of course, it's not going to let me keep this without being an ornery. Let's see. And let's get rid of delete, 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 delete. Okay. So if I were to highlight this, do you see, well, you can't really see those colors are the same. What would be a nice contrast? Let's try purple. I don't know if you can see that very well. Or green, would green be a better? Contrast color. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know if you can see on the video the, the change in those. That's orange and green, orange and green. Okay, but they're the same curve. What's the only difference? Is that I'm starting here at 4. When theta is 0, I'm going to start over here at this point, 4, and rotate 0. What happens when theta is zero in the orange dashed curve? Well, if I let theta equal zero, cosine of zero is one, square root of one is one times negative four. I'm going to start at this point and then rotate to the pole. So that's the only difference between uh, the, the plus four and the minus four. And you get the entire same curve. It doesn't matter uh, which place you start. Okay, so that is my quick, quick little introduction or summary of how you graph lemnus gates. Uh, something to understand here is that the, the cosine is uh, symmetric with respect to the polar axis. The sine is symmetric with the line theta equals pi over 4. Let's graph that one. I'm going to get rid of this now. Okay, let's graph the sine one. And I can't write theta equals pi over 4. But theta equals pi over four. Theta equals pi over four is the line y equals x, right? Because that's the same thing here. And you see how the sine lemniscate is symmetric with the line theta equals pi over four. All right. So there we go. Now I think I've done enough on lemniscates. You have a great afternoon or day, and uh, we'll talk at you next time. Thanks.